Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. So in today's video, I'm going to be working on a side project that I'm hoping will complement Botanical Beauties. So if you've been watching along, I think you guys have just watched episode three, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think you've watched episode three of me working the pansy prompt. So I've covered it up. I don't want any spoiler alerts here for those that are following the Botanical Beauty uh, project. Um, what I'm thinking about now is I want to add more to it. I was watching Susanna's video the other day and she is going straight into the layering around the flowers and collaging and all of those sorts of uh, techniques. Mine has been sketch, paint, uh, stitch, embellish. And I haven't really got to the embellish yet. I thought it might happen in the flowers. Um, a few beads appear later in the episodes, but that's sort of it. And as much as I love it the way it is, I just feel like I could take it just that little step further. So I started thinking about what else could I add to my tablecloth around all of the prompts for the flowers for the year. So I've been tossing around doing some hexagons. I haven't done them yet, but I might still. Just some random little hexagons, English paper piecing technique or scatter them by themselves. So I could have them joined, I could have them scattered in different fabrics, just sprinkled over the whole tablecloth. I do like that idea. I'm sort of looking for something that I could nibble at through the whole year on the, on the side of this project. So that's still definitely in the works. I just haven't filmed anything yet. Then I started thinking about this image that is finished and it's sort of invoked the feeling there could be critters. And I was chatting to Susanna a couple days ago and I said to her, I really could do with a couple more projects because when I look at my schedule for the week, um, I've got probably space for two more projects. So that sort of sent me down rabbit holes all over the place. So we were just throwing out ideas and a couple things are in the back of my mind. And I was like, I kept coming back to this project. And I said, you know, I, I really could do with some add-ons, some, some elements that maybe in six months time, I start adding them to the piece because I don't know if they were gonna work yet. I think they will, but if I could create a basket or a container of bits and pieces that may or may not make it to this project, even if they don't, they'll be there to select from for future projects like slow stitch projects. So that's where I'm at. So I've decided upon Calico, is a beautiful match for this fabric because I want to stitch onto something, have it floating in a container and then pick out of that container pieces that might join this project. If they don't, like I said, they'll be on another project. So I'm pretty sure Calico is the way to go. I've looked at all my antique linens. I've looked at really old fabrics, but I sort of, I want this ratty, finish to the piece. So whatever I stitch, create, paint, whatever it is, I want to be able to fussy cut it out and then really rough up the edges of it so it's furry. And you'll understand why this is the technique I want when you get to the end of the pansy prompt. It sort of will make sense. So this will suit the uh, project. So whatever it is can then be invisible stitched onto the the tablecloth maybe some of it will maybe some will just be spare and it'd be lovely to have spare remember a while ago i think it was nearly a year a bit ago i made all those scrappy scrappy butterfly scrappy dragonfly scrappy heart scrappy rabbit and they were just in a container and i have just picked away at them they've gone on to gifts they've gone on to other projects I sort of feel like I need to build something like that up again, but more in the Jennifer Clouston techniques that I've learnt. 
style of way. Does that make sense? Anyway, stop talking, Karee. Get on with it. So after all of that, I'll put this aside because you don't need to see that. I dug out this book. Now, I have already done a few things out of this book over the time I've been on YouTube. And I just thought, well, dragonflies. In here are all sorts of critters. There's snails, there's bees, there's bunnies. Now, I do not want to get into this type of stitching. I'll tell you right now. I, I just, my goodness, could you imagine the fine work? Now, another thing that's rolling out at the same time as all of these videos is Marion's World. Marion is doing a moth. She did her first moth um, last week and oh my goodness, stunning. So I think that's in the back of my head as well, that my tablecloth of flowers could do with some critters. And when she did the moth, it sort of reminded me of a butterfly I did years ago, but I didn't film it and I stitched it onto something. I think it was the French garden the roxy creation journal of stitchery number two gosh i can't remember there's so many now so it sort of brought back the critters idea again so this has sort of been percolating and then once i finished talking to susanna we were sitting and stitching getting our homework done we started going down the rabbit hole of pinterest oh my gosh like look at the butterflies i could so do a butterfly a couple of butterflies but anyway, what I'm thinking, first of all, one thing at a time, dragonflies. There's a dragonfly there. They are relatively simple. I can make them as embellished or as not as embellished layers. Like I, I have a feeling I could really explore the body of a dragonfly with all sorts of techniques. So I thought I'll turn on the camera. We're going to have a play. We're going to make some additional elements for pieces in the future. Could be botanical beauties, could be just a page in one of my journals, just a slow stitch page. It could just be the right thing to add to a piece. Look at him, isn't he beautiful? Just gorgeous. Just gorgeous. So this book, oh, look at the center of that flower. Mm. And I thought this is a good way to, little, little bird, this is a good way for me to keep playing with my stitches, my Jennifer stitches, um, because I don't want to forget that. It's all muscle memory, isn't it? Look at the rabbit. Maybe I will be brave and have a go at a finely stitched rabbit for my piece. Or just have him in that basket of goodies, little critters that can find a home somewhere. You know what I'm finding too is... There's so many embroidered doilies out there and I've got a small collection now because a lot of the pieces I've used in Roxy Journal of Stitchery projects. So I sort of need to get out and about to find more doilies. But the biggest hassle I find when I do get them and then I go rummaging for a piece to add to something is they're just not the right colour. So I'm getting to the point where unless I'm in a certain colour palette, it can be quite tricky to add in a vintage stitched doily. There he is. See, we could do bees. He's not got his head on because he's in a stage of construction, but it's bees. Um, so I'm thinking, oh, he has got his head on. She, that's how he did it. Okay. Anyway. Um, so I, I just started throwing some ideas around in my head. Look, look at him. If you were doing a lime green piece, he'd just be perfect. But in my doilies, my butterflies are bright yellow, bright blue, bright pink. And that's if you can find them. My goodness. Who was I watching on YouTube the other day? She's just started her channel. Um, I'll link it below. Oh, gosh, I can't remember. If I remember to link it to below and she went for a drive with her son to do some foraging of um, antique linens and fabrics linens fabrics doilies for her her business 
and she was in one shop. I don't want to name the business because there's a heap of big charities in Australia. And this one is one of the big four or five. It's like the big banks of this country. Anyway, um, she had a, a doily with a crochet edge and it was $8. $8 Australian. That's just, it's getting out of control and getting harder to find. Look at him. So... My theory is I need to start in these spare moments between projects, just creating some bits and bobs for a basket, basically. That's how this has come to be. It'll give me that extra video I need through the week and, um, yeah, start building up a little bit of stock of elements that I might be able to use one day in a project. And if these all end up on that tablecloth around all my flowers, great. So I've been sitting and sketching all night um, dragonflies. I'll probably do other critters, I'm not sure, but today is dragonflies. So where, where did my dragonfly get to? Don't tell me I've lost the, the sketch. Let me grab my tablecloth, maybe got mixed up. Because what I did, oh, here he is. So I sketched him out, he's not exactly what I'd want to stitch because his wings are a bit small. I just had this scrap, so I was just got my heat friction pen. See this wing here is way too small for the others because the fabric was sort of that scrappy bit. I then pretend he stitched. I then furred him all up because I've now fussy cut him out and then I can invisible stitch him into position and he would have a nice furry layered feel and then he's like an additional element to my piece. So that's the premise. I found myself a nice big piece of calico. This frame I got from Amazon. Um, I saw it first with Rachel and she was doing the Fleur Woods course in the first half of last year. Later in the year, I managed to get myself organized and enrolled in the Fleur Woods course as well and Fleur talked a little bit more about them and provided a link and I'm pretty sure it was Amazon but they're now everywhere uh, to get one so I did and it really helped me with my fleur wood piece because there's such heavy stitching within that piece that it kept it beautifully taut and then you've just got a frame that's just handy it's done and it stays like this should work so I thought this frame might become my dragonfly frame. Whether other critters join it or not, great. If they do or they don't. So, the plan is to sketch a dragonfly on here and go for it. So, let's 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 begin. Now, I went to Pinterest, found lots of pictures, and I just started sketching. See what I mean? I just started sketching wings. I even found a grasshopper. Um, there we go. Lots of dragonfly shapes and just the way people had painted them to give me the form of the body. So I'm just going to open up one of these ones in front of me just so I can remember because it's like 3 in the morning. No, it's not 3. It's about 4.30 now. Couldn't sleep. I had a coffee late and that just jiggered me. And then I've got dragonflies buzzing around in my head. So let's let's get this body. And some of them on Pinterest are a mix of French knots, beads. I don't want to make them too big too because um, my piece will feel overpowered by dragonflies. So I've got to be a little bit cautious of how I do it. I think I need two eyes there. And they seem to have a little body that gets quite thick at the base of the tail. That must be a joint in there that helps this tail wriggle around the way it does. Things like the tail, I saw pictures where wool was put down and they couch over it to stitch it down to get that raised feel. There was some that had layers of bullion knots, 
which I thought was really cool. And between the bullion knots were other bullion knots. <laughs> like, I think this is going to be a bit of fun. And as I said, if I don't use them, I change my mind. Doesn't matter because I think these little fussy cut elements will be handy to have. Um, let me just come down a little bit. This is the one where I think we'll do little bullion knots, maybe two, could even be three needed, down his tail, little bullion knots across, or we could use a bugle bead, like the beads and the stitching that can go with these little guys. His back, there were quite a few I saw that were French knots, all filling in the back, so that gave a nice round roll, thick, sort of feel to his piece so things like that can be done um, then the wings they sort of they have this main wing and it's quite a generous wing that's whether I can get the same size wing on the I'm probably overthinking it making him look even That's not even. I should have started this video with the iron handy. Maybe I can fix that by doing the second wing there and then making the first wing out there. Is that a save? No, I think I want those wings for about, see this, I knew the wings would be the thing that jiggered me up. I might go and grab my iron and iron out those wings because I want to be reasonably precise. I'm going to pause the video, guys, and I'll bring my iron back up to here and we can then just touch them. They'll disappear and start again. One moment, please. Okay, I'm back. I just got to wait for the iron to heat. Ah, oh, yep, beautiful. All right. So happy with the body shape. It's just the wings. Now the wings, to stitch them, oh my gosh, I saw some beautiful, beautiful dragonfly wings. They had things like, this is the Jennifer element coming in, um, fly stitch or even feather stitch. Feather stitch was probably the better because it sort of, is a bit wonky as it comes down the stitch and made beautiful veins on the wing. So I'm getting sidetracked. Draw the other wing, girl. That's better. That's not right. How come I can never get the other side looking the same? I know bugs move and I'm probably overthinking it. Gee, now a wobbly hand there. <laughs> oh my goodness. Some of the other wings I saw it was um, just ribbon, ribbon embroidery. Bring the needle up, take it out. It was fairly wide ribbon and then go down with a little turn on itself to pin it down. And then they were putting long, elegant stitches over that ribbon. I thought that was very clever. So lots of wing ideas. Some of them, they laid fabric in there, like a netting and then stitched over it. So you had like the feeling of fabric as well. And then there were others that, um, beaded it. The edge of the wing was often a couched down, um, uh, what do you call it, say a thread. Just might try another one. A little bit smaller. Don't make his tail too thin because there's quite a mechanism in there, I believe. His head looks ridiculous. They have these little buggy eyes, two little beads, great for eyes. Um, down comes this little tail. This is a little guy. 
just in case he's a bit big for my work i better do a few little guys oh at the end of the tail there's this little v i saw stitched quite a few times we'll get to the feet because i'm still sort of thinking about them a little bit then there were people that thread painted a bit of a, a joint in the head so they'd fill that with stitches fill that with another color that with another color some of them using variegated threads which, which were just beautiful so you can see that there's all sorts of all sorts of ways to approach your dragonflies i'm trying not to think too much about i don't mind that it's a little bit out of whack but it does show a little bit of movement it doesn't look like he's just sitting there um i feel like his body could be a little bit fatter here once you start sort of really looking at the shape of the body of the dragonfly once you get that in your mind you'll you'll be right you'll be away so let's let's find another spot now there were dragonflies that were sitting on branches let's have a play with one of those so picture a branch coming in no that looks silly think about it girl branch coming in so we're doing like a side profile he's got this little long body don't sketch draw properly Otherwise, you've got nowhere to stitch because you've just, you know, slap happy girl. Where's the shape of your dragonfly's body girl? <clears throat> Start again. Show the head and a bit of a body. Then his tail. And then his wings, of which you really only see two. Come out his back like that there we go and then these little V and then you've got little so that classic dragonfly now let's talk legs they have a lot of legs and they tend to give them lots of little joints I'm sort of thinking with the legs of not adding them at this stage the reason why where's the one that I've torn out of the fabric say this is my tablecloth here's my stitched fussy cutout element my thought is when it goes onto my tablecloth or my piece, that's when I stitch in the legs. Because the legs often, I've got a few legs on a few of these pieces, so I just want to have a look at their positioning. When he's on the tablecloth, I'm thinking the legs come out past it, like so. And then they've got their, they've got these little tweezery mouth. They've then got these long, two long legs. And I thought that might be interesting visually because see that leg doesn't actually connect to there to the, the bottom. It connects in at that joint. You've got to really have a good look at your dragonflies of where these legs all go now that to me looks quite interesting if that was on the tablecloth that would look quite interesting or on a piece of slow stitch or on the side of a bag so the legs i think at this stage i'm not going to add i'm just going to embellish these little bodies and then come along and add all the legs when i know where they are on the piece does that make sense Okay, let's have a look. I think we can get another one there and might try and get another one there. Sort of wasting a bit of space here. Let's draw this one. So that's the plan. 
the heads of them. Let's talk the heads. A lot of um, beads. Um, I saw even, gosh, I went down a rabbit hole of stump work and I'm like, I don't have time to do stump work. I'm sort of just looking for some something simple because you never know where they're going to end up. So to have big wings sticking up in the air might not be. They don't really have a head like that. Most of them were drawing beady little eyes. Is there enough room there to rip around? Yep. I right, don't like it. I feel like I'm encroaching on him. I actually think he should move down. Let's get rid of him. Maybe I'll stick to the center and work out. Then I know I've got room for everyone. So yeah, grab yourself a piece of calico, grab your friction pen, get yourself on a digital device and have a look at the dragonflies out there. That body needs to be thinner. Don't like that. It's so much fun. Maybe you just do some sketching and you don't stitch them and you just put them in your stash. At least they're drawn and you never know when you might need them. Let's have another go. Might give him a little head and his eyes, little joint. Seem to want to do the right hand side of these wings first. Must be because I'm right handed, is that what's going on there? There we go. Could be a fraction longer, but no, that's all right. Be, yeah, no, they need to be a fraction longer, just a bit. That's better. Do I bring his tail in a bit smaller? His little body, he's only a little guy. They have very large wings, so we sort of don't want the body overpowering the... There's his little joint where all this fancy tail comes out of. Where else did I see? Oh, like if you just look at watercolour ones. Beautiful. Some of the things that they do with watercolours. So you could certainly put some paint if you really enjoyed the painting I don't know what I was doing there I was just drawing lines this bottom's got a bit messy hasn't it I'm trying to be a bit more precise instead of so sketchy sketchy there we go that's better all right Um, we had this sideways one, didn't we? I've got to get his wings up here. Let's get his wings in position. And then his little body. A little tail with that joint. And there's his little tail up into the air. Crooked as anything. But once the thread goes in there, that'll certainly straighten lines up. Don't forget the little V at the end. Did I get his little V over here? Nope. It's those little things that make the animal work. So the sideways, where's my sideways guy? He's got a longer view of his head. Do his body, little eye. Yeah, not happy with that. I was determined not to rush it and get my collection of dragonflies right. So then his little legs 
come out accordingly. All right, can we fit another one there? Um, let's try and get some wings. And like I said, if I don't use them all, or I don't use any, it doesn't matter. Am I too close to there? Probably am. Yeah. Maybe it's getting those wings. wings don't connect there that's his waistline they connect just behind his neck like that that's pretty good I think the wings if I don't think about it and I just go swish swish it happens it's when I start thinking about this shape and their don't forget the V, legs will happen another day. Do I need to adjust that wing there? I think I do. Like how many blooming dragonflies am I doing here? That's all right, we'll pick away at them. I've got some Sue Spargo threads that I've been hoarding. It'd be lovely to have a play with those. Oh, goodness, see, you muck around. Should have just left it. There we go. Okay, can we get... I think we can get another one here, can't we? Especially if I tilt his body. He's really testing my positioning. There's the body. Those wings are going to hit, but let's make some small ones, hey? Body needs to be smaller. That's better. So I'm not sure what other projects I'll come up with to fill my week. I've been working really hard to get ahead because I've got a busy march because I'm off to Susanna uh, down at Ballarat for A, the retreat, and I'm away for 10 days. We're going to have 10 days of whooping it up shopping in all of her antique haunts this tail's too small see so take your mind off the game so if you ha i think susanna's got some seats left too just a couple i'm sure she'll be doing a video soon to give us a bit of an update on how that's going i know a couple ladies had to pull out because um, of something, I don't know the exact reasons. So that was a shame to lose those girls. So there's definitely two seats and I think there, there might be another seat that's just not looking right. Don't overthink it, girl. So yeah, if you're down in that area and you're not doing anything and you'd like, I think four days of stitching, come along. We're gonna have a ball. I'm in charge of entertainment, can you believe it? How will I handle that? I'm in charge of the games that are going to be played. So I'm just going to annoy the hang out of everyone. They'll all start be sitting there trying to concentrate on threading needles and stitching. And, and I'm going to be like the class clown. Should be fun. Okay. Can we get any more on? Maybe a little guy down here. Was that one even in shot that I just sketched then? Taking my mind off the, the eye off the ball. Little guy. So yeah, I've been busy working on uh, Stitch the Season. I think I've got four more videos to do. I'm up to the birds. Oh, I'm so excited. 
Oh, finally getting to do that um, blue jay. I'll do that in the next couple of days. And the little birds, and I've still got to do the text. I know what I'm doing, but I've just got to do it. I go a bit more linear long. There's probably one sits over the other, not that way. <laughs> what I'm saying is I bet these little these wings sit a certain way. And I'm probably drawing them incorrectly, but that's okay. It's impress impressionistic, isn't it? All right, I think I think we've done well. I think we've created a lot of work for ourselves. I think that's what we've done. All right, so let's start stitching. I need to grab my threads. I won't do those, I don't think, yet. <coughs> Yeah, so what was I saying? I've been busy filming. Um, I might work on him first. He's down in this corner. Busy filming ahead. So I've got the January calendar I'm working on, the, the seascape scene that Susanna has for her calendar prompts. Batanga Beauties I've done. I'm ready to start February. So that's very exciting because it's my flower. I get to pick the flower. I'm thinking I'm going to do teal. Oh, these these little critters. We're going to have some fun with these. Just one one thread. It'll be fine, girl. <clears throat> um. Yeah, and of course the Roxy project is coming along. I've been busy filming that. I'm sort of to the point where all my embellishing's done and I'm waiting now for a video from the girls on, why haven't I got a needle in here that's useful? I'm waiting on a video on the closure that Rachel alluded to that she's never shown us. So I thought, oh, I better hang around for that. So yeah, busy, busy. And then I looked at my calendar and I thought, oh, I really could do with some additional little projects. That is such the wrong needle, but it'll get me out of trouble. Gosh, it's a, the wrong needle. I must be sitting by my chair, so well prepared like usual. I've got so many needles in so many projects that maybe I've just run out of needles. That is just not going to work just ridiculous. That's the needle I use to thread wool. There it is. It has disappeared. So yeah, probably could do with one more project. Can you believe it? Like seriously? And I sort of just want something reasonably simple, not anything full on, but I just, they always end up full on. I don't know what's wrong with me. Now, what are we doing here? Do we do colonial knot? Yes, looks like we are. Just fill the top of the body in colonial knots. So I'll be able to get a little bit sparkly with these guys. <clears throat> so this one is going to have a body full of French knots or colonial knots. I think we'll do colonial knots first around the perimeter. Then we'll pick some different blues and graduate it into the center. So that's going to look a little bit interesting. I will be here forever. Oh, now that I'm threaded. We'll be here forever if I carry on too long on one particular knot. So what we might do is just do one more. And I 
I'll bring my thread up and out of the way. So let's pick. See, at that stage too, you could put beads in the center. Yeah, let's do that. I've lost interest in colonial knots now. <laughs> We're now going into the bead department. And let's just sprinkle a few little beads in there and see what we think. I'm thinking stay in the blues. So some of those could be stitched in there on the inside. So you'd have a combination of fabrics as well as embroidery. Let me zoom that in and show you. Why is that not? I think I've gone slow-mo. Okay, I'm back. Technical hitch there. I went to zoom you in and I looked at my screen here and it just wasn't working with my fingers. You know, you do the pinch in and the pinch out on your iPad. Um, and I thought, oh, have I put it into slow-mo? No, I hadn't. I just had zoomed in as far as it could go. So I had a panic that I'd jiggered up 20 minutes worth of videoing, which I hadn't. So it's all good. So those beads, I love them. They're going to go across the back of this little guy. So that's a definite. Where's my little tray? So that they can go with me for this evening's activities. Um, I do have some bigger beads here. Maybe one of these might work for his head, you know, his eyes. These are four mil. These little guys, they're like my new favorites. I don't know if it's because of the colors. These are two mil. Got them at Spotlight. I'm wondering if these little black four mil beads. Oh, yes. Nice big bulbous eyes. So if I even found some, what did I say these were? Four mil. So if I went to three mil for some of the smaller bugs, you could do a French knot. So that will work. So they're going to be handy. And here I was thinking that I would never use all of those. All 5,600 beads. You watch me. I will. I promise. I will. The little uh, beads are too small for that. So three mil would also work for eyes. Now wings. Let's have a little look. Oh, you know what we should do. Um, there are some really interesting wools in the Steph Francis collection. Let me just, I've just jumped up. Attention span of a gnat. Steph Francis. These are in the, my Stitch the Seasons pack. I see these. Oh, I've been hoarding them. This one I've got put aside for Blue Jay. So I haven't yet open this one this one i opened for a project goodness knows when but see how there's mixed threads these are rainbow and would probably still work but aren't they gorgeous so something like that i know i've got a gold as well so what i would do then oh i'm having a moment where's the scissors And being that my project is, you know, stitch with colour, all of these flowers we're doing, I can certainly get away with being brave with colour on these little dragonflies and just make them all sorts of pretty colours. It's going to be a study of dragonflies. I definitely want to do some with fabric where we lay down a fabric. Let me just get, some. I've got an iron clicking here. Talk about dangerous. Unplug the iron, girl. All right, iron can't burn me. So we've worked out the head, the body. Let's have a little fiddle with the wing. I think we've got about 20 minutes we can go. So we've got time. So bring it up. Oh, you beautiful, beautiful little thing. So I'm going to go back down this couching on a, a decorative thread. So you could use wool, 
you could use, um, oh gosh, twine. You could make them look real natural with twine. I'm looking for something that I can couch him down with. I could just use cotton. Probably would disappear. He's multicolored, so he's not helping me. I go for something that's really neutral. Yeah, I've got this little bit of cotton on this old, old reel. Look, there's something stuck in it. What is that? Oh, my grandmother, she was forever sticking. See, she would have thought that that was worth keeping. Gosh, she was a shocker. And she's popped it in this old reel. Too funny. I know I often find things inside all of her old crocheting cottons where she's, you know, poked a pattern or the label from another cotton that doesn't match the cotton that it's in. It's just random. Whether she was chatting to someone and she was fiddling and that's how these little random things happen, possibly. So what I'm going to do is just show you how I would couch this on. For those of you who have been stitching a while, this is new. This is not new. But the newbies, this is how I would couch a beautiful thread into position like so. Just come back through and every every few little spots just pick up your needle and thread and secure down that decorative piece let's put a little caramel stripe over it which i don't mind actually gray would have been a good one too so you can make your elements your stitching even more decorative by what you stitch over the top of your stitching does that make sense picture a red thread and then come back over it with a white thread so you'd get a candy stripe that's what I mean it's about making making your piece or your area you're couching look more interesting because of what you're doing with your threads so don't be afraid to play now I'm going to really hoot ahead here and put my stitches further apart purely so that I get that wing secure and I can then start something else because I want to do some feather stitch inside it. Gosh, imagine what we could do with metallics, metallic threads on these little dragonflies. Mm. So I think what I'll do is I will for my homework just finish the one dragonfly and then i will come back and we will do another dragonfly together and slowly build up a little collection of dragonflies and the video will pop up whenever i've got a gap where i'm like okay i'm on top of all my big projects we now just need our little little project and we might even start some other critters and just, yeah, play. No pressure, just play. But we'll see how we go. There might be enough just with dragonflies to help me out here. I've got a bird pattern that I really want to do too from a, a well-known designer. And I spoke to her, goodness sakes, I think August last year and said, do you mind if I do it? And I just haven't got to it. I just haven't really felt like it too, like a three-dimensional piece. I think it's because I've had all these projects on my mind. Who knows? So I'm making my way down here. So remember I went through the fabric, so now I can bring that taut 
And there is my wing, variegated threads, wacky do. I went through the thread, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Oh no, don't not, seriously. So I started thinking about the feather stitch, took my mind off of it, and it got out of control. Okay, so that's not going to go anywhere for a moment. Just put an extra couple stitches. Needles and threads hanging everywhere here. I'm actually just working my way back up to this point because I think it'd be best if I finish it probably up here. So I might bring the thread up here so that wing looks like it's coming out from underneath. If that'll work. And that'll go down there. Trying to be very careful with my. So maybe my Sue Spargo and my Steph Francis threads, my hoardy threads, might come out to play. Let's not be hasty. Let's just settle down, girl. There we go. So I've got that anchored enough, I think, that it won't be in my way too much. So I'll just let everything dangle there out. Maybe I'll put a little pin in that. I just don't want it to get caught in the next. Okay, so let's remove those needles before they get caught in me. All right, now, Remember I mentioned in here feather stitch. So we want it fine. The, the dragonflies have like see-through, delicate, really pretty little wings. So I'm thinking we need something quite elegant. And for some reason I'm going towards this color because I do want to see it. And I'm thinking it needs to be one strand. I might be wrong. And that. Okay, so let's pick up this thin needle. And feather stitch is the one that sort of waltzes down the, the fabric. So you start up here. Refresh my memory. It's been a couple of weeks, months since we've done a feather stitch, but I think I can pull it off. Got threads behind. Oh no, rip. Need a bigger knot. Need a bigger knot. If this fabric was sitting on some wadding or some batting or you know something thick, the threads would catch in there with those knots and it would be a lot better. But I don't want the bulk on my tablecloth. So I'm having to do a reasonable knot. So just a little stitch. Like so. And then over to the side. I think you anchor it, don't you? If you anchor it, I think you've got to turn your work around too. I've got Jennifer in my ear. So then you pick up the fabric. You've got to head in the line of where you're going. But you start again at the top 
of where that stitch is from the previous going through the fabric. So that point there, you put the needle to the side of it, pointing to the direction you want to go, which is right down the center of that wing. And you get this little feather stitch. It's so sweet. I was a big fly stitch girl and I thought I was so tricky. When I picked up this one to my repertoire, I'm like, hmm, fancier. Oh, now we got technical issues. This is the problem when you don't stop and start your video. You just keep going and you end up with a mess like I am here. It's high risk filming, let me tell you. But it's all good. We'll survive. Just take my time. Oh, come on. Might be frustrating for you guys, but. So that is one strand of stranded cotton. So you could use sewing machine cotton if you don't have any of those threads, but you've got some sewing machine cotton, that'd be beautiful. I think the secret with these dragonflies is you can make the body chunky in here so go for it knots um beads just whatever but the wings need to be couched or stem stitch you could do uh and then wrap the stem stitch in another thread we'll probably do that on another one another day gosh when you start thinking about the different things you could do to these little little fellas So if you've just found me and you're wondering, what is this girl up to? I will link below the Botanical Beauties project. And you then will know where these may end up, which I think they will. I think they'll be fun. We'll fussy cut them out like we do in the journaling. Fussy cut out our little bits and bobs to add to our piece. <laughs> Gosh, so far everything's reasonably not a mess at the back. All right, so there's my feather stitch wing. I'm just gonna pull it out of camera shot and finish that fine thread off. And then we'll go back to couching. See, I've got a mess here. I just, very careful not to. So I can finish this off. With a couple little knots. I wonder if I'll be brave and do a, a Trish Burr fine embroidery piece one day. I just don't know if I'm fine enough in my work to do it. I don't know if I'd enjoy it. It's too, too fine. So I've got a spare bit of thread left. So I might put that in my tray for a rainy day. Now let's, let's finish couching down the other wing because we've got a little bit of time. So I need to pick up that brown caramel thread. move this back out into position gosh isn't it the gift that gives these variegated threads imagine what the other side will look like beautiful so we'll finish couching down this so imagine if i'd cut a piece of um tool in for the wing and then couched a thread around the outside of the tool that would look rather sweet too. Now the tail, I'm thinking along the lines of bullion knots. I probably should have gone there next to do that. And maybe a darker blue, like a navy blue. Let's give his, his tail a little bit of substance. If I don't get time, which I probably won't, I'd have to be coming close to the hour. Just Google into not google go do a search on bullion knots in youtube go to one of the experts that do it 
There's heaps of them. Heaps and heaps of videos. And um, have a practice, come back, and then use your bullion knots to create your tail. I might just grab my pen. So what I'm thinking for the tail here is do a bullion knot that goes to that joint. So there'd be a bullion knot and then a bullion knot. Whether they're thick enough to sit side by side neatly, I might need a third one over the top, possibly. Um, then something to divide it, whether that's just some little satin stitches or another bullion knot. Then I'll go again with more bullion knots. Wish I had more time. But I'm sure you guys get the general gist. You've probably already paused me and you're gone and you're sketching dragonflies. <laughs> That's what I'd be doing. I'd see it and go, all right, all right, I'm off. See ya. <laughs> Tension span of a gnat. Just threading that up again. Oh, forget about it. I need to have a quick play of a bullion knot. See, in my head, I felt like it needed to be a dark, a dark blue. But I didn't really want to use stranded cotton because stranded cotton, when you start mucking around with bullion knots, can disintegrate a bit on you. It starts to unravel. So I prefer, I prefer a finish a sentence I prefer a cotton that is like you know not split stranded is that what I'm trying to say even an orange but I had blue in my mind I don't have a dark blue here guys I'd have to go further afoot maybe I don't have a Oh, I know where the container is. Hold that thought. My goodness, we must be over the hour. Here we go. Here we go. Blue. We're in the department of blue. So, see, even things like that could be couched. Gosh, possibilities. Maybe we go a turquoisey colour. Yes. All right, let's get one bullion knot in and then I'll leave you alone. I know you've all left anyway and I'm the only one sitting here talking. Yes, none of you are here. You've all gone off to do some stitching. For those of you that are still with me, thank you. Very, very pleased that you're still here with me and I'm not talking to myself. Now, my theory here is we probably do all of the... Um, long ones first and then once just getting threads out of my way once we once we finish the bullion knots on this tail we then do the little crossover knots and I, like the little cross sections I think that'll neaten him up a little bit Try not to split your thread when you come back up with that needle. But like I said, go and watch a tutorial on it because, uh, I, I, you know, I, I just managed to get things done. <laughs> and often it's technically not the right way. And I know because the moment I do something that's not quite right, someone tells me, which I don't care. Like, it's like, oh, yeah, that's right. I should have done that. And often it'll send me down a little rabbit hole to see what I was doing quite wrong. And it might be just the way you insert the needle from what end. And it's all that stuff I never remember. So I've wrapped it, I think, the length of the gap here. It's hard on these frames, but it's doable. Just take your time. Oh, come on, pull through. There we go. Hold it, hold it, hold it. Give it a little twist. 
beautiful. And then anchor it down. And that is a bullion knot. There we go. You see it sitting there? All right, guys. I've got so many threads now dangling everywhere because it's just the way it is. I think I probably will need three. We'll see. So I might leave you now and I'm going to go off and finish my little dragonfly. And he will be the first, first part of gathering a bit of a collection of critters to add to my tablecloth. And if they don't end up on the tablecloth, doesn't matter. They're going to go into a beautiful little box <clears throat> somewhere and be hoarded and not come out for three or four years. <laughs> Who knows? All right, guys, look after yourselves and have a great day. Thanks for joining me. And um, I'll go off and finish this. And I, at the end of this video, you'll see a picture of my dragonfly. All right, guys. See ya. Bye.